So it's around noon, and I decide to head over to the Golden Nugget to play in their 1-2 uncapped game. I decide to buy in for $500, and we win a couple small pots, but unfortunately get told we cannot film. So I decided just to leave, I racked up and booked a little over a $50 win. So instead, this vlog is going to encompass a 2-5 and 1-3 session from Bellagio. How's it going? Welcome back to ESP Poker. As you probably just saw, the Golden Nugget was not okay with me filming. So the plan is to head over to Bellagio, hopefully hop in their 2-5 game, if not hop in the 1-3 game. I'm going to put up on the screen where the vlog total stands just with that short session at Golden Nugget. So I'll put that right there. And with that being said, let's head over to Bellagio. We make our way over and end up sitting down at a 2-5 table. We buy in for the max, which is 500, and we get a pretty fun hand to start it off. There's a dealer change, and one of the players at the table convinces the dealer to let us do a $10 double board bomb pot. This means each player puts in $10 before seeing their cards, and we go straight to two separate flops. Seven handed here, we pick up an okay hand, which is Jack-9 offsuit. The two boards come out king 10 deuce with two diamonds and 773 with two spades. An initial player bets $20 and there's a call. Although it's a small bet in relation to the pot, I just don't have anything going here. So I elected to fold. The initial better took the pot down on the turn. He ended up having seven deuce of diamonds for trips on one board and a pair and a flush draw on the other. So we pretty much had this pot locked up. Next hand of note, we have East King suited under the gun. I make it 20 to go, and only the player to the left of me calls. Heads up to a board that comes Jack-8-7 Rainbow with one spade. I decide to check, and he bets pretty big, he makes it 50 to go. Although he could be doing this with a draw, I think we just have a pretty straightforward fold here. So I let it go and he ends up flashing jack-10 at me. And I quickly realized the player to my left was playing very heads up. He was only betting when he connected with the board, which I definitely took note of. And that leads us to this next hand. I have ace-10 offsuit on the button and make it 15 to go. We only get a call from the player to my left again and see a flop heads up that comes queen-8-3 rainbow. On this board, I only expect him to continue with a pair of queens or eights based on how he's been playing. So I decide to bet, I make it 15 to go, and he thinks about it for a sec before releasing his hand. So nice that we kind of have a read on this guy and able to drag some small pots here and there. Over the next hour, we lose a couple small pots and my stack drops to about 425 before we pick up queen jack of hearts. I'm under the gun and make it 15 to go and we end up getting three calls here. Four ways to a flop that comes jack 6-4 with two diamonds. Here with top pair, I decide to bet $25 and we only get a call from the big blind. The turn comes a king, and although we get downgraded to second pair, this card's gonna be better for my range, so I decide to bet $35, and after some consideration, the big blind decides to release his hand. I'm happy with my decision to bet on the turn, but looking back, I need to be betting a little bigger here. Nevertheless, we drag this pot. The next one's a fun one, we have King Jack of Hearts in the cutoff. Couple limps to me, I make it 15 to go, and only get a call from under the gun. We go heads up to a pretty good flop, it comes 10-8-6 with two hearts, giving us a flush draw. When he checks it to me, I decide to bet $15 and he makes the call. The turn comes the six of diamonds pairing the board. And this time when he checks it to me, I think you can go either way with a bet or a check. But in the moment, I elected to check it back. Looking for some help on the river and we get it. It comes the nine of hearts giving us the flush. Even better, he decides to lead out on the river for $25. Now, I'm definitely going to be raising, but I think a bit about how big I should go. Realistically, this card shouldn't help me unless I had exactly a flush draw. And for that reason, I felt like I could go a little bigger. So after some thought, 
I decide to raise it to a hundred. And I wish I went even bigger, because he calls pretty quickly. I show my hand, and he mucks. Although we might have missed out on some value, this was a much needed hand as it brought me back in the green. So I played for a little longer and decided the best course of action was to rack up, so that's what I did. However, there is more poker to come in this video. So for the 2-5 session, we were in for 500, out for 510, for a massive profit of $10. I got dinner and met up with my friend who flew in, and decided to come back to Bellagio to hop in the 1-3 streets. I got seated at a very active table, there are a couple big stacks, and one individual across from the table that was very intoxicated wearing a cowboy hat. He was playing very loose and I definitely took note of it. So after losing a couple pots, here's where the fun starts. With about 260 in my stack, I'm in the cutoff and pick up aces. Couple limps to me, I make it 15 to go, and the drunk player as mentioned, who is in the big blind, decides to 3-bet me to 60. It folds back to me, and I consider raising it to 150. However, if I do that and he calls, I'm gonna have an awkward amount behind on the flop. And since this guy's pretty drunk, I think there's only one move. I decide to go all in. It actually takes him about 30 seconds to realize I went all in, because he's trying to chat up the girl giving him a massage, but eventually he does realize and starts talking to himself. This goes on for a bit before he says something that sparks my interest. I'll let you listen in. Yeah, I'll call and tell you where he's from. Where you from? Maryland? Maryland? Y'all a bunch of lying motherfuckers. My grandma's from Maryland. I call that shit. Call. Oh. So I told him where I was from, and apparently that was enough for him to call. He ends up showing pocket nines, so we only really need to avoid a nine here. The flop comes king, queen, ten. The turn is a six, and the river is a jack, so we hold. And with that, we get the full double up. Only 15 minutes later, I'm on the button and pick up aces again. The drunk guy under the gun makes it 15, and then the player to his left 3-bets it to 70. It then folds to me, and here's where I made a mistake. I have a little over 500 in my stack, and I think if I'm gonna 3-bet here, I want to go somewhere in the 180 range. But in the moment, I knew there was a lot of action at this table, I figured the drunk guy might go all in again, so I decided to go all in for a little over 500. Unfortunately, the drunk guy releases his hand, and the player to his left that put in the 3-bet thinks about it for a sec but eventually folds and shows three deuce offsuit. Not necessarily happy with my decision to go all in, but still happy to take down some money without seeing the flop. At this point, it was 1am and I had been playing poker all day, so I decided to rack up and hit the cage. So we were into the 1-3 game for 300, out for 606 for a profit of 306, bringing the vlog episode total to a profit of 1532. For the entire Vegas trip, I ended up with a net profit of 198. Although not a big win, pretty happy with that, even though I did just get kind of lucky in that last session. I wanted to apologize for the lack of videos I've been making. Pretty much, I just got a little burnt out and I wasn't happy with how I've been playing. I'm not going to make any promises, but I would like to make more videos this year, especially because I might be going to some places that would be good to vlog. Lastly, I wanted to say thank you for a thousand subscribers. When I made this channel, I didn't think I'd even hit a hundred, so I really appreciate it.
And with that being said, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.